secret location in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. You know, I'm really starting to get annoyed with your program. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, I've made reference to this on the air, but I have to talk about it as a topic because I'm amazed that people haven't noticed this. And the few people who have brought it up after I've referred to it on the air, they, they seem to be in denial about it. You know, when I hop into the sack, I want to get laid. I don't want to chit-chat. Chit -chat. I don't want to uh, read or watch television. If somebody's in that bed with me, I want to get down to business. Now, I'm just going to say that not everybody is for everybody else. There isn't always chemistry between two people. And sometimes you are with somebody with whom you don't have any chemistry at all. Or sometimes you're with somebody who simply doesn't want to have sex with you. Or they use sex as a gimmick to get you to commit to a relationship with them. And then later, when they are living in your home, suddenly uh, they try to find little excuses or little ways out of having sex with you. One of the worst... One of the worst of these is the one where women demand a massage before they will have sex with you. Now, boys, I just want to tell you, if you have had this happen to you, that woman doesn't want a massage. That woman is trying to stall you off to make you lose interest. I mean, that woman is waiting until, hopefully, after your thumbs are tired, after you're, you're tired from straddling her, after you're tired from, from, from massaging every part of her body, after you're tired from listening to her criticize the way you're doing... Come on, that hurts! Ow, ow, ow! No, not there! There! No, over here! No, over there! No, over here! And you know what happens, boys. That's what happens. And that's the game plan. You know, I belong to a private club, and they have a masseuse, and a professional deep tissue massage costs $90 an hour. 90 And it costs $90 an hour because there is expertise involved and because it is hard work. Somebody has to put their hands on your greasy body and send and you just keep pushing away there for an hour. They get 90 bucks an hour because they deserve it. And usually a tip. When I want to get laid, I don't want to go to work. Being a masseuse or a masseur is hard work. I don't want to do it. Even if it feels good for the woman I'm doing it to, it makes me lose all interest. It makes me lose all desire. It makes me lose my entire sense of urgency. Before, I was lusting after you, and now my thumbs are tired. I feel like I've been texting your crazy, psychotic ass all day long. 
And I just, I, by that time, I'm not interested anymore, and I have the sneaking suspicion that when I'm not interested anymore, women are breathing a sigh of relief. I also notice that not all women do this. I don't know a woman who doesn't like a spa treatment. I don't know a woman who doesn't like going to get a massage from a professional. It's the ones who insist on getting a massage before you have sex with them. I think they know exactly what they're doing. I think they know. That by making this demand, and by the way, making you go on and on. Is, has there ever been a woman who's been satisfied with five or ten minutes of massaging? No, no, no. No, they want the entire treatment from head to toe. You have to go on and on and on. And even then, as I said earlier, you will be criticized for the job you do. You'll be told that you're not, you're not pushing the right places. You're not getting that knot. You need to do someplace else. You're doing it too hard. And she's lying there practically, by the way, they're practically falling asleep. That's very uh, erotic, you know, to see a woman there. Uh, oh, yeah, just go no, there, there. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. Oh. And by the way, how many of you have, have fallen for this ruse and she actually did fall asleep? And there you are sitting there with, with stiff thumbs and other body parts. How about any of you? Come on. I resolutely refuse. If somebody makes that an ultimatum, if somebody says, I'm not going to handshake with you and you give me a massage, you promised me a massage, you promised me a massage for my birthday. And you never gave me the... You ever, you ever get to one of these conversations? Remember Valentine's Day? You said you were going to give me a massage. And you never gave me the massage. And then you said you were going to give it to me for my birthday. And then you never gave it to me for my birthday. And then you said you, you, said you were going to give me a massage, but you didn't give it to me. So I'm not going to have sex with you until you give me a massage. Save me. Holy crap, Pola, come on. So I, I just have resolutely refused. I just, you know what? Tell you what. You stop being a cheapskate, call a masseuse. <laughs> I'm out of here. I have literally gotten up and left when that demand was made. I know I'm not paranoid. I know women know exactly what they're doing. They are filibustering. Women have a variety of ways of filibustering if they don't feel like putting out for whatever reason. They have a headache or they're tired or maybe they just don't have chemistry with you in particular. Whatever the reason, they're trying to find some way to get out of giving you what you want. And there's no more effective way to make a guy lose interest in sex than to demand a massage. Am I right about that? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It was a rule when we got married. Never mess around on me. Never stop filleting me. And never get fat. Never stop filleting me. Words I can live with. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Yes, women demanding a massage before you have sex with them. What is that all about? Sally on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. <laughs> I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller. I'm actually surprised I got through. Um, I totally agree with what you say. Women do whatever they can do to get out of having sex. Unfortunately, I am the complete opposite. <laughs> I do anything to get sex, in other words, from, you know, my boyfriend. But, I mean, I never ask him for a massage. It's always the other way around, and uh, it's it's just a different kind of thing. But I just don't agree with the women that try to do stuff to get out of having sex, you know? That's why most uh, guys go out and cheat on their women. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's truth to that, Sally, but uh, not many women will admit to that. Exactly, but, you know, but it's true. And that's the problem with women these days. They can't admit to anything that they do wrong. You know, I mean, if your man wants to have sex with you, then just do it. You know, what are you going to waste your time for? And say, oh, I want a massage, I want a massage, blah, blah, blah. You know, put your stupid whining and give it up, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, really. <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'd like a haircut and a shave before I have sex, okay? Well, you know, <laughs> to, to each his own, but, you know, I like... By the way, as things. absurd as that sounds, it's no more absurd than asking for a massage. Exactly. Or demanding one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if anybody should be demanding anything, it should be the man demanding from a woman. Right. That's how I feel. That's right. Bend over. Yeah. Let's go. Exactly. <laughs> and then That's iron my I iron my shirt when we're done. <laughs> and dinner, right? Just right. <laughs> Feed me. Yep. That's how I I've told be. you you know, you I've told you about the perfect woman, right? Yes. She's the one that turns into a six pack and a sandwich after you're done effing her. <laughs> That is very true, Tom. That is very true. <laughs> you know, I mean... And folds I, my shirt. It's just crazy because women, oh, why did she cheat on me? Well, why do you think? You know, if you didn't want to give it up, I have to get it somewhere. Right. You know, and it's, I think it's the same for women, too. If you have a man that doesn't take care of you the way he should be, then, you know, go do it somewhere else. Right. Drop, you know, just drop him. Drop him like a bad habit. Right. You know, it works both ways. I yeah. agree with you, Sally. Thank you for that. It's Elizabeth on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi. Uh, this is Elizabeth. I know. I just uh, said that. Yeah. Sorry. sorry. Um, I just want to let you know that your reasoning is so off base for women in this country or any country. Well, the first caller, Sally, agreed with me. And I'm going to tell you now there are two classes of women, the slut and the one with quality. She's a slut, okay? <laughs> <laughs> She's a slut. Why? Because she be, because, because she because she won't slut? insist on a massage before a guy has sex with her. She's a slut. Uh, for that fact that he she will not expect not expect but to honor herself as a woman as a creature oh, of, of Jesus. beauty of of higher. This is value. exactly why your type is not my Can type. I tell you something. That's I tell you though, just the like, tone of voice, the way you're saying it is such a turn off. You want to teach treat women like they're a piece of meat and never okay let me you want to know what's going inside my head right now this is what's going on inside my head right now okay yeah that's right and every man having to hear your voice that's what we're thinking huh can i tell you one important thing i think you'll like it though i doubt i will but go ahead Women actually do want to look up to a man. They they do think the men are, in fact, valued for being smarter, uh, masculine. The traits uh, inherent in a man. Yes, but I'm not a masseur. Are, what? But I'm not a masseur, okay? I'm a brainy guy, but I am not a masseur. Yeah, no, that's ridiculous. I agree with you. You don't have to actually give that person a massage. That's ridiculous, but just... Treating with kindness are are that that good. They are that good, and I think what you're no American women like, generally are a bunch of fat and fugly bitches who are demanding and have a sense of entitlement, and they think they're a bunch of princesses. They, they are they're looking for Prince Charming, uh, and meanwhile they're just a bunch of big fat hogs. That's not true. Look around. LA's got a beautiful batch of women, right? In really? Korea. How tall are yeah. you, dear? How tall? Yeah. I didn't say I'm the most beautiful. I'm five ten. How much do you weigh, dear? I'm not, I don't have to give that up. That's oh, okay. Uh, one ninety five. Yes. No, I'm not one ninety five. Two hundred. How much? One forty five. One forty five. Okay. Yeah, I'm normal. I'm healthy. A woman shouldn't be supposed to be a stick anyway. That usually She's means you got like junk in the trunk. Yes, I know. <laughs> Let's face it, women are equal on certain levels, but they're not the same as men. Women are different from men. They need so what? treatment. Huh? Oh, they don't need massages, dear. And by the way, all women they don't demand roses. massages. Uh, no, they, they, need roses. they don't. They do not need roses. No, they, they don't. They need a little f feminine respect. Women are still feminine. Well, they, the, most women, women in this country are not feminine, okay? They're very masculine. They're, they're like guys okay. and they make demands. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, I'm not going to accede to those demands. I think you think they're so high up. These men are still way, way suffer, su uh, soaring higher than women. They know it. They are suffering a lot more than you realize. Oh, yes, I know you're suffering. You're a victim of discrimination. <laughs> you don't want to accept it, but women are, like, totally... They don't know how to work as well as men. They Whose fault how, is that? They're not even as smart as a lot of the top ones. They're not... Well, I, I, will, I will agree with that. 
1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Bob. Bob is calling from Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. First time, long time. Thank you, son. Um, if a woman falls asleep while you're giving her a massage, uh, that don't mean that you got to finish. <laughs> She'll get to finish. Well, they call that rape in most states. and uh, not, if, not if she's already with you. No, okay. no, no, no you haven't been following, you haven't, have, you haven't been following these no means no uh, court cases. Let me tell you something, pal. Okay. You are running a risk of being accused of rape if you do that. Really? Yes. Well, I'm going to run that risk, Psalm. Well, good luck to you, Bob. <laughs> See you in litigation. Hey, and there's nothing wrong with hoes. No, I'm in favor of hoes. I am, too. Okay, can I go out with a bong hit? I prefer sluts to hoes, but, uh, yeah, you can, of course. <coughs> it's Ron on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? Great. Good. Hey, I just wanted to comment, um, you know, about what we've been talking about here on, on the air here. I, I was in that relationship. And I just want to tell the guys out there that's not normal. If the girl's telling you no, get out. Just leave. I mean, F well, see, this one, this one is perfect. It's the perfect excuse because she's not saying no. She's saying, I'll give it to you and you give me a massage. Exactly. I've been in that relationship. Light the candles. Give me a massage. Next thing you know, you got to slip it in real quick before she says no. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm in a perfect relationship now. She wants it more than I want. Like the Unabomber at a mailbox. Yes, I know. Exactly. So, I'm just guys. If you're not getting any, get out. You get you you get more by yourself. Why would you sit there and stay in a relationship with somebody that wants a massage and wants the care? I mean, that's fine every once in a while. Maybe. I mean, you got to do something, I guess. But not all the time. I mean, if you're not getting it because she's got a headache and she wants a massage and all this, if it's every time, get out. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I agree, and that's what I've done. I've I've gotten out. Exactly. Because I know, I know this is not somebody with lower back problems. This is somebody who's trying to delay it until I lose interest. Exactly. And I'm just saying to all you guys out there, if you are in that relationship, get out. There is a girl out there that will do everything you want her to do at a drop of a hat. And I'm just telling everybody out there, just get out if you're in that relationship. Ron, thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Valerie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, I was just calling. That lady that said that you have to be a slut to have that opinion is totally wrong. I have never once demanded a massage before having sex, and I've been married for five years. And my, my sister's the opposite. I know for a fact that that's exactly what women do. You have it right on the money. Yeah, because I, I, I know that all women don't do it. Yeah, I'm saying that, yeah. I mean, if a woman says that she needs to have a massage, she's totally trying to get rid of you. Or if she says she needs to take a shower first or anything like that. <laughs> oh, yes, I love that one. How about the ones who use a diaphragm and they say, I'll be right back. And they go to the bathroom and the water is running for like half an hour. Yeah, it's just, it's just, and then. Like, how long does it, it take to grease that little disc up? Come on. Yeah, and then they get upset when you deny them if you're too tired or something. I mean, the only time I've gotten a massage during sex is when I'm bent over doing something else. <laughs> so I, that's the way it should be. Women need to shut up and just get your man right and then... And shut up and her. do us. That's right. Just shut up and do it. I've never demanded flowers or anything like that. They'll bring them to me every once in a while, but I've never once demanded it. And you know what? I get it. Yeah, well, I, the women who say we've got to talk... Yeah, That's the you know, oh, biggest turn off in the world. Oh, then you meet, then you, then you have the conversation, and it's about how you're not romantic enough, and you don't bring flowers and all that. It's like, oh, please, you know what? Right. You know, if I'm that inadequate, why are you still here? Exactly. Leave I would it. say leave immediately. Right. You got it right on the money. This is a nine one one emergency. Get the hell out. Exactly. You got it right on the money. The women, I don't but know. But they don't about. leave because they love sitting there and complaining, and they love getting stuff for nothing, and they love telling men how inadequate they are. They love that. Right. Well, you, you, you need to keep up the good work. We're making all these men not be such big fat pussies like you say because, you know, 
you need a strong man. Right. Right. And you have a great day, Tom. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Valerie. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jessica is calling from Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello? Is that a question or a statement? No, I'm just saying, well, I just wanted to talk to you about your opinion about hairstylists. <laughs> when did I talk about hairstylists? You made some comment a while ago about hairstylists that they couldn't actually make it in a real college. <laughs> Well, that, dear, that was like months ago. Well, I just wanted to give you my opinion about it because I'm a hairstylist. And have you... Have case you ever... closed. Hello? I said case closed. Do so, you know how much anatomy and chemistry it takes to go through that school? I don't really care. The point is, as I have always said, uh, that uh, beautician schools are the last refuge of a uh, non-educated scoundrel. Okay, even though I've been through college for business already and I'm choosing to do hair. Yeah, why is that? Because that's what I enjoy doing. I've already made it through college. I have a bachelor's degree in business. Ooh, ooh. What do you look like, dear? Oh, I'm better than anything you can imagine, Tom. Uh, I doubt that. <laughs> what Darling, what uh, most people that go to beauty school, beautician school, call it what you will... Uh, these women uh, just essentially have punted. They're just waiting to meet the guy they're going to marry. That's what it's all about. But I was already married when I started school. I, I, I use the word most here. I don't care if you're the exception to the rule. It doesn't matter. Most women who do that, that's I, what they're like. I just want you to admit that not... I'm not admitting anything. I mean, you know why? Because this is just stupid. You know, I make generalizations every minute of every day. I have made it really clear that there are exceptions to every rule, and I don't think that you are more intelligent than the rest of the morons who call in here. Is that just because you're at that standard, too? What's that? Is that just because you're all at our standard, too? Oh, no, dear. No, I'm making a living. I'm making a seven-figure income talking to morons like yourself. Hmm. And you, so you're going to say that without even knowing how much money I make or how much the majority I know you don't make as much as I do. You want to bet? Yep. I own three homes. I'm starting my own business. So what? I have cars that are... Paid. I've owned my own business for two years. And I do it from being a stylist. I don't care, dear. You still don't make as much as I do. Mm, I'm not sure, Tom. Yeah, really? How much is your annual income? How much is yours? It's in the seven-figure category. Do you make more than a million dollars a year? No, you don't. Okay. You don't, do you? Yeah. You're lying. No. Really? So uh, you, are, you are getting paid. Let me understand this. You work as a hairstylist. You're making $20,000 a week. Just about, In yeah. Portland, Oregon. On top of my business. Yes, I am. You would have to be making 20000 a week. Not almost 20000 You would have to be making at least 20000 a week to make a million dollars a year. And you're not. On top of mine and my husband's business, yes, we no, are. No, no, no. I'm talking about you. Me personally, between the two of us. I'm not talking about the two of you. I'm talking to you. Me personally, no. I, I don't. You might be married to an NBA player, for all I know. I, I don't care what he does. I'm talking to you. I, of course, you don't. That's, You're the one as a beautician. But that's that's even besides the point. You're the one as a beautician, dear. I don't care what he does for a living, and I don't care how much money he makes. You're not making a million dollars a year. I could buy and sell your ass. Oh, no. No, oh, no. Oh, yes, I could. No. Yes, I could. Trust me. Trust me. My whole point is that I just want you to understand. No, I, uh, dear, you're not going to make me understand anything because you're intellectually inferior to me. It's really clear. You're also a liar because you claim to be making over a million dollars a year. And then we found out that you were combining your husband's income and I don't know who else's income in there. Okay, so because you just... Uh, there is no way you are making a million dollars a year, and finally the truth came out. No, because you decided to drop out of, what, 10th grade and got lucky getting a radio I job? didn't drop out of 10th grade, dear. I went to college myself. Oh, what, what college did you go to? Fordham University, dear. Mm. Where did you go to? The Beauty College of the Pacific? Where did you go? One of them I went to, yeah. Uh-huh. Great. <laughs> I made that up, and it turned out to be Drew. <laughs> 
bachelor's degree that I have, yeah, I did go to a beauty college on top of my bachelor's degree. Sure you did. And what college did you go for your bachelor's degree? I went to OSU. OSU. Is that so? That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So how much do you really make? How is that relevant to the point I made? <laughs> no, no, it's completely relevant because you made a claim. You claimed to have a seven-figure income, which, of course, now we know is bogus. So how much do you actually make? Between me and my husband? No, husband. no, no. You. Let's see. I charge about $60 a haircut. I do a minimum of 10 a day. Uh-huh. On top of that, I probably make mm, probably about... So that would be what? How much? Ten to about ten to fifteen thousand dollars a week. Ten to fifteen. You know how much that is per year? A lot less than a million. Including my husband's income, it's right. No, we're not the... including your husband's income. We're not talking about him. I never said I. I did. don't really care about your husband. I never said I made. I also money. think if you're getting sixty dollars a haircut and you're doing ten of them a day in Portland, I I find that hard to believe. Why is that? Because I've seen the cows who live in Portland, and I'm telling you right now, that these women are not spending $60 on a haircut. Oh, come out to Northwest Portland. You'd be surprised. Darling, I've been to Portland. I know all about it. Mm, obviously not too much. I mean, unless you're, doing that, uh, unless you're doing that haircut between their legs, I don't think that there is a $60 haircut in that town. Oh, only for you, Tom. Only for you. Darling, I don't live in Portland. <laughs> Tom? Uh, no, no. Buy your own telephone. I'm not talking to you. No. Thank you. Thank you. She ran out of steam, so she had to put the husband on. <laughs> Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You say you should get laid for free. There is right. no such a thing. Oh, I see. So you're a whore. The Tom like it Show. Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Somebody had to say something about chicks who said they won't have sex with you until you give them a massage. What, are you kidding me? These are chicks who don't want to have sex with you. At least not that night. And maybe never. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Carla. On the Tom Lanka Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how are you? Great. <laughs> I just thought I'd call you and tell you, you know, first of all, so many people that call your show are complete morons. I mean, the guys and the girls, it's just, like, amazing to me, like, the IQ level of the people that call you. Well, it's amazing to me, too. Uh, it's amazing that I make such a great living talking to them. Absolutely. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's a killing you're making, actually. But my thought is this. What you say about women is true for the most part, but I think you have to take into consideration L.A. in the terms of, like, women in L.A. are very different than women in the rest of the country. And I, but, I, but I don't agree with that. I think that attractive women are different from unattractive women. And let's face it, if you go to most of the Midwestern states in this country, mm -hmm. you got a lot of chunka chunka going on. You know what I'm talking about? That and not, though. Hot, I mean, hot chicks gravitate to places like L.A., Miami, Dallas. Few of them to New York, but they don't know any better. But you know what I'm talking about. I, I do, but what I'm trying to say is what people, I've lived in L.A. my whole life. I was born and raised here, and I understand that everything in L.A. is very materialistic. And when you get consumed but that's by, because we have so many hot chicks. Hot chicks are materialistic. I agree, they are, but, you know, I don't think every chick in the United States has, you know, falls under that. I think a lot of the problem no, is... No, I know there are chunk of chunkas out there who'll make dinner for me and fold my socks, and they will get down and do the dirty work under the hood and all that. Absolutely. Under my hood, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the, but the bottom line is that, uh, you know, I don't want to be with the chicks, you know, from Missouri and North Dakota... Montana, you know what I'm talking about. If there are any hot chicks in those states, they immediately move to Los Angeles, Dallas, or Miami. No, I, I totally agree with you, and I just I think that it's actually kind of sad for girls that I mean, 
are a normal, intelligent girl who's in L.A. who's trying to actually find a normal relationship. We're actually, you know, we look bad because of all these other girls. You know, it's I, I'm a normal girl. I want to, you know, date a guy, have a real relationship. But I understand the only reason I would get married is to have kids. I completely agree with you. I think my generation is completely screwed when it comes to, you know, longevity and marriage. I think all the... Um, I, I think the whole essence of marriage is completely destroyed for my generation, and it's a sad case. But, you know, I would say, the, I agree with you, the only reason to get married is to have kids. Why else get married, you know? But and even I, then, I don't think there's a benefit to guys. The benefit is to the women and the children. The, the benefit to a guy, I mean, is basically to have a companion. I agree. I heard your – I'm not a longtime listener, but I get your gist. You know, why does a rich guy need to, you know – marry a girl he can have a bunch of girls but i don't need I mean, to pay a companion i agree well a girl doesn't need to pay a companion either unfortunately the, the, the woman bears the child so she's stuck with the child for life you know the guy can leave well, so it is in a it's a it's in a woman's interest to be married but shouldn't it be a guy's responsibility to you know if he's gonna have a child to stay married well can? not if he's not happy I know. Well, you know, that's just the problem with our generation in, in general. I think it's really sad what our world's come to because my parents, you know, their generation, when they got married, it was a, it was an embarrassment to get divorced. That's why they stayed married. There's no shame in divorce now. No, I mean, I have there's no shame in being a single mother, unfortunately. That is extremely unfortunate, in my opinion. But that's the know? way it is. I, I know. I mean... The whole hell in a handbasket thing is, I completely agree. With. I don't know what the answer is, though. Uh, well, I, I know the answer for men is to make sure women don't get our sperm. Because sperm are, every, every, each individual sperm is a credit card waiting to be signed by the woman you're having sex with. That is cash on the barrel head. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. A lot of men are being, I'll say this, and, and I know I'm not, I know a lot of women are going to be upset that I'm saying this, but there's a lot of men. They're getting locked into relationships blatantly because a woman just wants to get rich. But I have to say that there's women out there who aren't that way. And I know you were just talking about there's an exception to the rule. There is, you know, but those women are hard to find and they're rare. And good luck to guys trying to find them because, you know, I'm having a hard time trying to find a decent guy, too. You know, because all a guy wants is, like you're saying, to, you know, have fun and, you know, get laid. Well, there's girls who want serious relationships, too, you know? Yeah, but you got to marry Poindexter. I know, and that guy, why is the guy who wants to be in the relationship always, like, you know, the one that, you know, is not as fun and, you because know... Because he's the guy who has to be in a relationship. That's the only way he's going to get a woman. I know. That's it's why it answers itself. Uh, why are uh, rich, attractive guys not interested in getting married? Oh, because they don't have to. Right. So what is, so what is, in your opinion, is the ideal answer for a normal girl, you know, who just wants to... Lower your expectations. Lower your expectations. Yes. Like I say, go down to the IT department. There's a very nice guy who's not terribly attractive, not terribly exciting, but he's very reliable, and he puts money in his 401k and his IRA, mm -hmm. and he knows how to trisect an angle. Has a pocket protector. He'll show up at home on time for dinner every night. You always know where he is because nobody else wants him. But can I tell you something? I've always been the person. I've been the guy. I'm always the one who dates the guy who, you know, and when I was younger, I would pay for everything. You know, the guy had all these problems. I was, I was the, you know, I'm not saying I'm any kind of, you know, bigwig, but by all means, I was the, I was the caretaker in the relationship. Honestly, so this, were you not were you not that attractive? Was that the deal? No, I I, I mean I'm not going to like on a scale of one to ten, I'd say I'm like maybe an eight. I mean I don't know. Maybe an eight. I, look, I'm not an ugly girl. I'll say that. How tall are you, dear? I'm five. Let's say five one. How much do you weigh? A hundred pounds. All right. I and, have brown hair. And you're I'm, maybe an eight. No, I. I it depends what terms. I mean, I don't look like a Playboy model, but I mean, I uh, believe me, I have no problem getting guys. All right, good. Yeah. But they, so, these are guys who want to get laid, right? Exactly. So, I mean, girls. So, have to... if you want a guy who wants, you have to remember, a guy who wants to be in a relationship is a guy who has no choice if he wants to get a chick. 
Wait a minute. So here we go. This is my favorite saying. A guy is only as faithful as his options, right? Right. We read a story this week from Forbes magazine. Right. One third of all rich people, that is net worth one million plus, men and women, have had affairs within the last three years. I know. It's sad. You know, I have to tell you, I work with all these, you know, high profile people at work. And I have to tell you something. I have to give a, a good, you know, uh, lesson to all your girls that are out there that are trying to marry a rich man. I work with these women every day who've just married into rich guys, and they have no control over a checkbook. They sit home. They, you know, they have no control over anything, and they think they're marrying into this great lifestyle, and they're basically, you know, slaves in a house because they... They don't have anything. I mean, the guy controls everything. Is that the kind of lifestyle you want? You want to marry a rich guy just so, you know, you can live captively, you know? Oh, well, because while they live there, they get all the perks, you know? They get to travel. They get to live in a great neighborhood, live in a nice house, dress nicely. And that's what many women dream about. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, you what, when, when I've been married, I own the house. I own the house. I do not put anyone else on the deed. I've been living in the same house for 10 years. It's my house. Right. Mine. Exactly. Because so because I am not going to get divorced and have to leave my home. It's never going to happen, ever. Yeah, I, well, exactly. And what I'm trying to say is, does this all this looks really attractive to a woman on the outside, but do you want to sit, do you want to be in a relationship where you can't write a $500 check because your husband won't let you and you have no money. Well, no that's job. why that's why women should have jobs and have bank accounts and uh, have a prenuptial agreement if they're going to get married. It's, I, I think women are looking at. I, it, I, I'm going to go back to my original point. Women look at LA. They get consumed by the cars, the money, the this, the that. But that's and because many women in LA are super hot, and they can attract that. You know what? I heard a comedian who was really funny. He said, guys don't really care about cars. If it wasn't for women, it's women that really like cars. Right. If guys were just buying cars, they'd buy a truck, and they wouldn't really care. But the whole thing is... To attract is, women. Is to get the trim. It works. Yeah. It does work. Good for, you know, but it just, I'm just saying... You, you kidding know, me? When you're driving a $70,000, $100,000, $150,000 vehicle... You were going to get more chicks than a guy who drives a Kia Sedona. There's no two ways about it. But my thing is in L.A., but if you go to another state, it's not as important. But the so women aren't as attractive. They are, you know They're what? not. My brother, lives, my brother lives in Alabama, and Playboy rated Alabama, I think, top three hottest women. What? At colleges? Those women, once they graduate, will leave Alabama. If they're <laughs> that attractive, they will not stay in Alabama. Let me tell you, if they're posing for Playboy, they have already got a ticket to L.A., yeah. They are not staying in Alabama. No, I agree. I mean, how many women over 21 are in Alabama who you'd want to sleep with? And the answer is probably very few. Yeah, well, those southern girls are very pretty. You're right, but they don't stay there. They come here, and everyone's coming here. You know, The hot ones come here. Exactly. Uh -huh. You know, the, the ones who look like, uh, uh, you know, so the Michelin Man or Aunt Jemima, they stay in Alabama. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you. That's that's the bottom line. Yeah. No, but I have to say, you know, a lot of the things I think women call in and they get defensive because they're they're it's like some kind of a women's code that we have to keep, you know, a lot of these things secret, you know. The the fact of the matter is oh, 90 I'd give you about 95% of the things you say are absolutely true about women and I could tell the reason you're saying them, obviously a lot of it's from experience. Yes. And women don't want to admit it because they think that they're keeping some sort of secret code, you know. And it's very blatant. What you're saying is true. Women want to be taken care of. Women want a good life. A lot of them want to do it for nothing. They want to get off free, you know. And uh, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. So, But another unfortunate part is a lot of the men that listen to your show, I think, are really lame. And I don't think they even get the concept of what's going on. So I almost feel like a lot of your work... Um, is, you know... Pearls before swine, dear. Literally. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.